We're going to be talking about the most important rule in UI design, grids. Mastering this will improve your work by tenfold. It will take your designs from looking amateur to looking like you have years of experience. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up grids in Figma and use them to design like a pro. Hi guys, my name is Chili and I'm a senior UX UI product designer based in London. I've given a lot of design feedback over the years and I have realized that there is a common theme in people who are more junior or are just getting started in their design career. They are not using grids. Everyone is just guessing the spacing, the size of the elements and the text. Every size has to be intentional. And this is where the eight point grid system comes in. The eight point grid is a layout system used in UI design to create consistent visual structure and hierarchy for your designs. This ensures that your work is consistent and aligned. Use the eight point grid system as a guideline to determine the size of elements on your screen and the spacing between them. Grids allow you to achieve better looking designs faster and they also ensure that your designs will look as polished once you've handed them over to engineers. So this is the eight point grid system. You use increments of eight for size and spacing. Just using your eight times tables, so 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56 and so on. This is what helps to keep your designs consistent. Every time you size something, you do it in multiples of eight, both vertically and horizontally. Even with your typography, it should ideally be multiples of eight from 16 upwards. If you need a smaller size, then you can go down to like 12, which is a multiple of four. So it kind of still works, but you shouldn't really go any lower than that. When you get to like 10, this text becomes very, very small. And then that's where you start to not pass accessibility. Using this grid when you're designing, also allows for scale when using different size screens. We live in a world where there is a lot of different screen sizes and it wouldn't be feasible to design for them all. So instead we design in a responsive manner using the eight point grid system. Let me show you how to set up a grid in Figma. So you select your device. In mobile, you select the layout grid. As you can see here, we've got an actual grid grid. So let me change that to columns and we want four columns. And then we want the margin, which is the outside of 16 and the gutter, which is the inner swim lane of eight. So that is your grid setup in mobile. So now let's do the same for desktop. Let's change that to columns. In desktop, we have 12 columns we can put a margin of 32 on the outside and the gutters of 16. And for tablet, eight columns and similar margins to desktop, 32 and 16. So this is how you use grids when you are designing. Whatever elements you have on the page, they have to align to the different grids like that. In the case of a desktop, you can have loads of little things of 12 and then you can have them span across two columns or even three columns or any number of columns as long as they keep to the bounds of any of the columns and this is where you use them to start creating something a little bit more like a layout so here you can imagine there being an image here and some text here and a button maybe that button could be bigger these have a spacing of 16 vertically. This is how you start to make sure that everything is aligned on your page. Even in terms of the heights, you have to choose something that is a multiple of eight. With this video, we're gonna focus on the mobile screen. However, I will be making a detailed video on responsive design soon. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Now let's look back at the design I showed you. This is the original design. It looks okay and this is where a lot of people who are just getting started are where you've got some sort of color scheme the trendy rounded corners for a beginner design it's a good effort but there's no consistency in the sizes for anything here is the design with the space adjusted now let's go back to the old design and take a closer look at this spacing this is what the spacing looks like there is no consistency in the alignment, as you can see, the grid overlaid on top, there is no consistency in the spacing, 26, 44. This image over here, it is quite cool that it comes out of the box, which is quite creative. But again, that spacing doesn't align to any of the other spacing and neither does 
this spacing where your eye will make a line where it hits that box. Even on the next page, no alignment. So let's see what I've redesigned. So the first thing I did was keep the design the same and just put it in a grid. Already there's a better rhythm to the design. More can be fitted onto the screen without making it look crowded. I then took this redesign further and created this. So we're gonna put them side by side. I want you to have a look at these two designs. What was the process of taking this to this? I'll give you a moment to see the differences. To achieve this redesign, I used the four UI design principles, color, typography, layout, and image. I have a video that goes more into detail about these principles, which I will link below. I highly recommend that you watch it. Make sure you're using these principles as a checklist when you are designing. Let's go through the designs using the principles to compare. I've already shown you how I have used the grid. It is more uniform now. This covers two columns and this is flush against all four columns and everything is aligned to the margins on the side and there is more consistency with the spacing in between. So the typography, they used a really good typeface. I just changed these back to um, title case. I don't think there was a need for them to be uppercase and I left aligned everything. It's easier to read than center alignment. Next is colors. In the other video on design principles, I go really into detail about how to select your colors and to create a color palette. So here they have used orange as their main color and I wanted to keep orange as the main color. However, there is way too much orange on this page and it should be reserved for the most important areas which is the call to action button, the add button. And that's what I've done. I created a color palette around the orange. So I've got some harmonious colors here and the green, which is a complementary color. Yes, this page looks a bit more green. However, when we go into the other page where we've got the bigger orange buttons, that's where you see more of the orange. When you're designing, it's not always screen by screen. You're looking at how all the screens work together. The layout itself is quite good, it just needed adjustment with the grid and the colour that ensures that we now have a good layout. Okay, so next is images. The icons that were chosen are quite good actually. They're quite uniform and very minimal. That was a good choice of icons and I've kept them the same. However, the icons up here are not very uniform along with this image. They don't look like they were drawn in the same style so I made sure to choose icons that look like they're from the same family and a very similar image but more minimal and looks more like the icons. Same with the other screen. I don't know why the background is cream so I got rid of that. We're trying to make sure everything is minimal. This icon does not really match with the other icons so I found something that matches a little bit more. And this image, it was used in the other screen so I brought in a different image and illustration and I brought in the pink from the colour palette now and made the buttons bigger. So here the button's okay but think about if someone's thumb is hitting that you need a bit more space so I made the buttons bigger and on here we have got type on its side. That is an absolute no-no. There is no excuse for doing that so we made it fit under the image and this grey button looks so bold that it's actually competing with the add button for your attention. So I paired that back and kept it very minimal. If you found that useful, please hit the like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make a video on next. Remember to use these principles as a checklist when you are designing. This is the final week of my giveaway where you can win a one-to-one -one mentoring session with me. All you have to do is sign up to my mailing list and engage in the content on any social platform so like, comment, share on any platform. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next video.